What's up guys? Today we are fishing in sunny South Florida, exploring brand new areas, fishing by a nuclear power plant. Just look at that creature. Fish are chewing. Whatever we catch and harvest, we're gonna show you how to clean and cook it too. Yeah, buddy. For the fish with human teeth. We're taking you along with us. Let's go. What do we got? What do we got? Oh my gosh, it's a ribbon fish. <gasps> Should I flip them? Yeah. This is the coolest fish. I haven't caught one in years. Look at this fish. Ah! It's a sea monster! <laughs> it's a sea monster! By the way, this video is brought to you by Hair Club today. We are inshore fishing on our flax boat and we're gonna get into a mess of fish. We got some live pilchards, live shrimp, and I'm fishing a bridge structure. Just put out a little jig and I caught this crazy, shiny, pretty ribbon fish. Whoa, look at that dorsal fin. Look at that, just look at that creature. It's a wild creature. Ribbon fish are usually found offshore so you occasionally get them inshore when you're fishing this time of year. And again, I haven't caught one in about five years, but they're glorious, shiny, pretty, pretty fish. It's just so cool. They're also an awesome kingfish bait. All right, that didn't work out so well. We're gonna go try the inlet, got an incoming tide, what kinds of pompano and things could be in there. So, ready to try that? All kinds of cool stuff, I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go. All right, first fish of the inlet coming in. Ooh, fighting nice. Staying down deep. Big old Margate. Nice. They're delicious. Woohoo! Beautiful fish. And you can keep them at this size, I believe, but they're really good eating. A lot of people will end up throwing them back. But they're really cool and pretty fish, and they fight hard. Nice. Shrimp on a jig. Getting it done. Hooked up. What do I got? What do I got? The Jack Carval dragging something. Look at little Jack swallowing them. <laughs> cool. All right, switched it up. Fishing some structure, some docks with our live shrimp. And he's dragging somebody else's line in his mouth. Look at this. Hopefully it's not mine. Whoa, no, no, no. He's lived like this a long time, unfortunately. Look at that. It has growth all over it. He's been dragging a three foot line. Yeah. You know what? He deserves to be let go. Yeah, let that go. For sure. Uh, my hook just popped right out. Yeah, looks like I'm gonna be able to get this out. What I do is go in through the gill plate and then basically you just take your pliers and turn that hook around and it'll pop right out of them. And it's out. Mm -hmm. All right, so you can see that little circle hook and he's gonna be let go free. See you little buddy. We just saved your day from dragging somebody's very heavy line. You can see we got just the really heavy duty circle hook right there. But I don't know, he's been dragging it a while to have all that growth on there. <laughs> yeah, Pretty crazy, crazy. Of time. Cool, let's get another fish. Hooked up. We are just doing all sorts of things to put fish in the boat today. Not for the lack of effort. We are just out here trying to hammer fish and we're just fishing spot to spot. And I literally just grabbed this rod because we hooked a piling. And on the other side of the line is a sheep's head. Woohoo! That is a nice one. I will take it. Look how fat that fish is. It is a nice one. Oh. Sheep's head, also known as the convict, because of the black and white stripes. We can see we're just using light, light jigs today because we don't have a ton of current for the fish with human teeth. Check that out. They have some wicked teeth in there. And they, you, see, you see all those crushers in the back too. That's what they use to crush barnacles. And that's why they love pilings and docks and structure, bridges, all that kind of stuff. That's what sheep's heads are known for. Beautiful fish. We finally have a delicious dinner fish in the boat. I'm like, stoked. It's actually on your rod, but I caught it. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm not sure. I got my line caught on this pylon. Yeah. And then I didn't know there was a fish on there. And then she went to go get, the, get it off because I was driving. And there's a fish on there. Usually anytime Brian hooks a piling or hooks the bottom by accident, he hands me the rod so he can drive the boat while I hook his line. So it's really okay. a team effort. I'm his effort. first mate. I'm, I'm his first mate. Yeah. I think, I'm not sure who's the captain around here, but whatever. It's a teammate. It's, <laughs> no, no, I can't talk. Team effort. Good job. That's nice. Beautiful. All right. Awesome. Where there's one, there's more. <laughs> Always keep that in mind about sheep's head. 
Oh, 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 oh. Hooked him. Yeah, buddy. That was the weirdest sheep's head bite ever. Oh my goodness. That was just the weirdest bite. He ate like he was a little fish. It was like tap, 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 tap. And I just waited till I felt the line get real heavy. And then I just set that hook. And we got a sheep's head on, baby. Let's get him in the boat. Yeah, come on, get over here. I'm ready, you're get in the way. Get in front of me. Mine's way bigger. <laughs> hey, hey, we got another fish. And it is warming up out here. It is a beautiful, floor today. It literally is 85 degrees. So yes, I know my outfit has changed, but I'm hot and I wear what I want. So um, <laughs> in the morning it was cold and now it's beautiful. <laughs> no complaints. I don't know whose is bigger. It's Mine's bigger. I don't know. Hard to say. Nope. No. One. It might be bigger. Hit him a little bigger. <laughs> All right. We're catching some fish. Nice job, Dust Yeah, we've been having a heck of a time today, but you know, you need current, like we always say, and the current just picked up, and we started catching some more fish, but every captain we talked to, all our friends, everyone's kind of struggling, so uh, we're just doing it piece by piece, by piece man. Sizzle's doing a great job. Uh, hooked up. Took a while to get that bite once again, but we got one. Oh, it's a big croaker. Oh, 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 delicious. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Woo. Hold oh, that croaker's fighting. Dude, he's fighting. Almost like a redfish. That's a stud. Fish are chewing. It is turning on. To be honest with you guys, we usually go home by this time of day, and we're not home, and we're crushing more and more fish. So it definitely seems like it's an afternoon bite. Now, you see how I set that hook on him. Perfect hook set. Wasn't going anywhere. He is hooked so well. Wow. So this fish, hear them? They're a member of the redfish family. They look very similar to a redfish, except they don't have a spot. And croakers get about three pounds, maybe four pounds. This is a nice size croaker. They're one of the tastiest inshore fish to eat. Also a great bait, but you know, much smaller size. That's an eating person sized fish. Nice job, Dust Sizzle. Yes, part of the drum family, red, red drum, uh, right. These things, croakers, what's the other thing? The black drum. Black drum. So, a bunch of drums. Got him! Jesus, you're on fire. These bites are so weird today. You really, like, have to have the touch for this because these fish are not aggressively, like, just gulping this shrimp down. They're just, like, tap, tap, tapping it, tapping it, letting go, tapping it. Oh my gosh, that's a huge croaker. Did you see that? I saw a flash. Holy smokes, it's like a redfish. You better get in this boat. You sure that's not a redfish? No, it's not a redfish. Oh my gosh. That is the that's a <laughs> croaker. That might be the world record. Oh my God, look at that sucker. <laughs> what in the heck? It literally looks like a redfish, but I knew it wasn't because he didn't have a spot. You guys have no idea how delicious these are. Holy smokes. Did I just tell you that they get like three or four pounds? This dude is at least four. For you croaker fishermen, this thing's ridiculous. You got, I gotta show this, I gotta show this to uh, Captain Paul. You gotta see this freaking croaker, bro. <laughs> Paul Spurko is our man on the beach. You have no idea how good they are. We've done croaker videos, so if you're interested, please check that out too, croaker, catch, clean, cook, but stud croaker. <laughs> Gorgeous fish too. They're all so gorgeous. Red drums are so cool. And just that noise that they make, that drum noise. Let's see if he does it. It's just the coolest noise. <laughs> it's like, it's just like vibrating inside them. But I guess that's their way of also uh, taking, telling predators to go away, I believe. I'm not 100% sure. Telling you to go away. Telling me to go away. <laughs> <laughs> but he, this is my personal best croaker. And a lot of people, again, will use them for bait. A lot of people will not eat them. That's gonna be just gorgeous fillets right there. Yes. We decided to stay in the same exact spot because this croaker bite was on fire. And I just continued to catch croaker after croaker, having a blast. The sun started to set and we decided to head home. 
Back at the house, let's go ahead and weigh the biggest croaker that we got. We actually bled these fish too and didn't even think about it like because we should have kept the blood if we want to weigh it for a potential world record, which I don't think is going to be a world record. But the state record, I believe, is four pounds, 15 ounces, which is a big croaker. So I actually have my kitchen scale right here. So let's go ahead and get an actual measurement on this beautiful fish. Hold on. It's not very even on this thing. <laughs> All right, found an even surface. Zeroed out the kitchen scale. These two pounds, two ounces exactly. And probably was a few more ounces with the blood in him, but he's been bled. So it was probably a two and a half pound croaker. Again, personal best. That's a really nice croaker. So let's get to filleting him. Using my dark sizzle fillet knife today to fillet up this beautiful fish. And this fish was cut right in the throat here to bleed him. That's how we did it in the cooler. So he is nice and bled, and this meat is going to look amazing. But let's just dive right into this. And I'll tell you guys a little bit about Hair Club and how Hair Club works. But a lot of you guys ask me, how can Hair Club help me if I have no hair? Well, that's what they specialize in. And if you are don't have any hair currently and you're bald and you want to stay like that, then fine. That's no problem at all. But there's a lot of men who are interested in having hair because a lot of men have hair loss at a young age too. Uh, but they specialize in that. Again, hair or no hair, they can totally help you. There's all different options available from non-invasive surgery to surgery where they actually will help you regrow your hair on your scalp. But they have free hair consultations online or in one of their 500 locations around the United States. So check it out. I'll link all that information down below for you guys so you can see what they offer. Just check, take a look at it and also use my promo code DARSIZZLE10 to save 10% on anything on their website. And you can also tell them that I sent you. So I basically, I just went around these rib cage bones, slabbed off that beautiful filet right there. And you can see that I just left that all the innards intact and he's a beautiful fish. That was nice and easy, super simple. And then we're just gonna use the same exact knife, a six inch curved knife, and just skin it right off. And you'll really see the color on this meat. And I don't see any worms. I have filleted croaker in the past that have had worms in the meat. And this looks pretty clean and delicious. That's not even a really a big bloodline to worry about whatsoever. A few little bones right here that I'm just gonna knock out. And that is all set and ready to eat. That's a big croaker filet. Delicious. Okay, we can finish up the other side and meet you guys in the house for the kick cooking with pudding portion of this video. We've got this fish and six more croaker to fillet. Wow, thanks so much to Sizzle for cleaning up those, the biggest croakers I've ever seen in my life. And welcome guys to another edition of Cooking with Pudding. I don't have the hat on today because I wanted to show you my beautiful hair club hair. And uh, I just want to remind you about one thing and then update you on another thing. By the way, I'm making delicious fried croaker sandwiches. It's one of my favorite things to eat in the whole wide world. Uh, okay, information-wise, all those links Darcy always talks about, uh, all that stuff is always gonna be in the description, guys. So the Hair Club discount, Darcy's website, uh, the Revo discount, all those discounts. And of course, all the gear we use in the videos, like the lures she mentioned, and even this cooking stuff. Check the description, the link's down there. Okay, enough of that business. I know that bores us all to tears. Update, if you guys recall, we posted and videoed about a tackle thief who was stealing from the Snook Nook and other tackle shops around the area. Everybody got together from all the different postings and the shares, hundreds and hundreds of shares, and I did the guy. Somebody even sent me his phone number and he was arrested. He was arrested like a couple days ago, uh, I think in Brevard County, a county up the road. And again, he was stealing from all different tackle shops. So this was like a mad, a mass thing and then selling them on eBay and such. So he's arrested and uh, I don't know what happened to him yet, but uh, we're gonna keep you updated on that too. So that's great, great job everybody. Great to get another tackle thief off those streets and out of the tackle shops so those nice folks can make some money. Uh, okay, back to this fish. I'm in the middle of cooking, right? So it's getting a little crazy. I didn't put my timer on. So I just did, we got, I actually got this recipe from our good friend Paul Spurko. I think I mentioned in the video, kind of what inspired me today. And I did a, <coughs> a simple coating on it. Actually found this panko with coconut on there. I did a, I did flour, helps the egg mixture to stick, which makes the panko stick, okay? And then I put it in coconut oil. I'm cooking it for about two minutes aside or until it gets kind of golden brown. So come take a quick look at this. So you can see my golden brown. I've already done some pieces. 
See how golden brown that is? All right. So it's, again, two minutes on each side. I'm gonna put a timer on this side this time because I get I lose a little bit of. Back it up, this they want to see me. They want to see me. But we're gonna make some delicious sandwiches, and I'm on the road already doing it here. Okay, I got some done. All right. We're gonna be paper plates because we're not fancy. I got these delicious. Darcy says these are the secret. These Hawaiian rolls. All right. Right here. Really good. Really good. As far as bread goes, I'm gonna probably have two or three of these today, but. Here we go. We got this. We just take some fish. We're gonna take just use our hands because Darcy and I've been dating for ten. Our ten year anniversary is coming up. Can you guys believe she's dating me for ten years? It's it's actually actually amazing. All right, here we go. Look at that. I like to put a little lettuce on there. We'll let, you put tomato in here too. I thought Darcy might buy some tomato for us, but she wasn't down with that. And then the secret sauce. Now of course sizzle. They're like, they're like people want to hear about people. People like people. All right. We're gonna use this remoulade sauce. You can also use tartar sauce. You can also make your own, of course. We're just gonna spread that with Darcy's famous knife. And of course, the link to the knife is down below in the description, right? Right on here. Delicious. This is a delicious sandwich. And you can cook so many fish like this, just make it delicious. A smidge on there. I'm gonna finish cooking up this fish, guys. I got about 30 seconds. Oh, it's got, it needs a little bit more. You hear it, you hear it? And then we're gonna meet you at the table with the taste test with Dar Sizzle. All right, Dar Sizzle, let's know how it goes. She has four sandwiches on her plate right now. He's already had four. I've had two. <laughs> <laughs> Plus two is four. I do have a ton of food on my plate. <laughs> I'm starving. You said that this is my idea, the, the Hawaiian sweet rolls, which well, it's your preference. It's from Paul Spurko. I know, but last time I got the wrong rolls and you got mad at me. So we made oh. sure we got the Hawaiian rolls this time. Yes, all right, let's do it. <laughs> So good. I just want to sit here and scarf it and not talk. Perfect amount of sweetness, fish, crunchiness, all that good stuff. It's just a bomb. Simple but delicious. delicious. Heck yeah. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We had a great adventure. And until our next adventure, follow your dreams, dreams and, and keep, keep on, on catching. catching. And Cheers. check out this next video if you got a minute.